Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is about the Netflix original, Night Teeth. The movie released in 2021 and the runtime is 1 hour and 48 minutes. It was directed by Adam Randall and written by Brent Dillon. It stars Lucy Fry, who played a half vampire on Vampire Academy, Debbie Ryan, who is famous for many Disney shows, Alfie Allen, who played Theon Greyjoy in Game of Thrones, George Lendenberg Jr., who has been in the new Spider-Man trilogy, Bumblebee, Alita Battle Angel, and many more. Raul Castillo, Megan Fox, and Alexander Ludwig, who you might remember from The Hunger Games. There's a lot of good actors in this movie. Before we talk about Night Teeth, I'm very excited about today's sponsor, Skillshare. I've wanted to try Skillshare for so long now, so it was perfect when they contacted me. I've been watching the Productivity Masterclass by Ali Abdal to help me get more work done because I find myself getting sidetracked a lot, and so far it's been really helpful. I also watched an amazing course by Dale McManus on iPhone photography and it had so many tips and tricks I'd never heard before. You can even post your projects in the student projects section and see what others have done. The videos are put together so well and they're really easy to follow. I'm looking forward to watching some about animation as it's something I want to learn. If you've been looking to level up your skills or maybe learn a new one, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. They have new premium classes launched every week so there's always something new to discover and their videos are ad free so you never get interrupted while exploring new skills. If you're interested in joining Skillshare, the first 1000 people that use my code ytcoganlawlands one mon will get one month free. Or you can click the link in the description and it will take you to Skillshare and apply the code automatically. Thanks so much to Skillshare for being a sponsor on the channel. Now we can get back to the vampires. The movie takes place in LA and it starts with a bit of narration from Debbie. She says vampires are all around you and you don't know it. Things were simpler in the old days when vampires hunted humans and humans hunted them. In Los Angeles, no one fought harder than a place called Boyle Heights. So the vampires struck a truce with them to maintain peace between both species. Vampires will follow rules and would live in secret and the humans wouldn't hunt them or expose them. Eventually humans forgot all about vampires being real. They made vampire books and movies, but got most of the details wrong. While living in secret, vampires became rich and more powerful than you could imagine. There are still some humans that uphold the truce and keep vampires secret, as long as they follow the three rules. Don't let humans know we exist. Don't feed on the unwilling. And never, ever enter Boyle Heights without permission. LA is ruled by the five vampire bosses. They each control most of the major territories in LA. Blair asks Benny, who do you think runs the city? Cops? Politicians? We do. So it's similar to the Blade movies where vampires have infiltrated all levels of government. A vampire lower in the hierarchy named Victor manages small businesses and blood clubs. But he's sick of not having any real power, so he makes a plan to overthrow the five bosses because he's tired of being told who he can feed on and where they are allowed to go. He got banished for feeding outside his borders, and this is when he decided it was now or never. First, he went to the humans of Boyle Heights. They were the ones the vampires made a treaty with around 100 years ago because they knew how to kill vampires and were very good at it. Victor thought, what better people to kill the five bosses than them? Unfortunately, the leader of Boyle Heights, Jay, told Victor to go to hell, which led to his friends being killed and his girlfriend being taken. This caused the vampires to banish Victor because the people of Boyle Heights are off limits to vampires because of the treaty. One of the bosses say they should kill him because if he starts a war with Jay Perez, then all of Boyle Heights will follow, and if they get exposed, they will lose everything, their status, their power, and their money. Victor does not care though. He tells them his girlfriend Zoe and her progeny Blair are currently taking out what he calls their entire network and that everything they see now belongs to him. This is where we see the two vampires being chauffeured by Jay's brother Benny. Zoe says they have five locations to go to and they have to reach them all before morning. These locations are important vampire hideouts and businesses such as blood clubs. I wonder if they have blood sprinklers like the blood clubs from Blade. Anyway, Victor's plan is to completely overthrow the vampires of LA before night is done. This is because if he can't take them out by surprise, and quickly, they will be able to regroup and come for him. Victor knew that Jay was a chauffeur, so his plan was to hire him to drive his girls around to the five vampire hideouts, and then drive him to the final location, which is Victor's house, where he would kill Jay. Victor says he needs to kill Jay because he is the leader of Boyle Heights, and once he is out of the way, it will be open season on humans in LA. Unfortunately for Victor, he didn't plan on Jay letting his brother cover his shift, which is how he gets involved in this situation. 
Benny drives the girls to a location and waits in the car. They enter under the guise of going to a party, kill everyone, and then leave. We see this when they leave the first location, and Jay arrives not long after to find all the vampires have been killed and the leader left to bleed out slowly. It's not clear if vampires rule other parts of the world, but it can be assumed there is a similar hierarchy in most major cities, consisting of multiple bosses controlling large regions. But vampires might be allowed to feed on unwilling humans or have totally different rules in different cities. The treaty between vampires and humans only exists in LA because Boyle Heights had such strong fighters, but that may not be the case everywhere. Aside from the humans of Boyle Heights, the vampires have one other group to worry about, the Night Legion. They are a network of vampire hunters not associated with Boyle Heights. In fact, a member of Night Legion tells Jay he can't do this on his own, implying the humans of Boyle Heights have been working alone and maybe even refusing outside help. The Night Legion seem to have many members and are well equipped. Their signature weapon is a crossbow that fires some kind of incendiary bolt. You can see they have fire or sparks that can ignite a vampire, and when sitting in the crossbow, the tips glow like they're burning hot. Nothing is ever mentioned about weaknesses such as silver or holy items, but when Zoe is shot with one of the Night Legion crossbows, it looks like she's been poisoned, so maybe the bolts have silver tips or nightshade on them. When Jay stabs a vampire in the heart with a blade, it causes him to burn up into ash. And when a vampire dies from exposure to sunlight, the effect is very similar, causing them to burn up very quickly. There's definitely no surviving the sun for these vampires. Their healing abilities are extremely good though. While talking with Victor, Jay quickly pulls out a gun and shoots him in the head and attempts to stab him in the heart, but Victor is able to stop him and seems completely unfazed by the gunshot wound in his forehead. It's not clear if older vampires are stronger or have better healing abilities, but I'm sure Zoe or Blair could not survive that. If a vampire is wounded bad enough, they require human blood in order to heal. This happened to Zoe when she was shot by the Night Legion crossbow. It caused her to look sick and her veins were more visible, and Blair said she needs blood. Victor was able to take a gunshot to the head like it was nothing, so the crossbows must be special in some way. After receiving some fresh blood, Zoe was fully healed almost instantly. These vampires are shown having super strength, able to easily pick up a human with one arm, and are extremely fast. Benny tried to escape the vehicle and get away, and as soon as he opened the door and stepped out, Zoe somehow got out of the back seat and was already standing in front of him. Vampires seem to remain the same age they were when they were turned, and once turned, their appearance doesn't seem to change at all aside from their fangs. One vampire seems to have some mental abilities. He says that people call him a psychic. He was able to tell that Benny was a virgin somehow. It's not clear if this ability is unique to this vampire, or if any other vampire can do it. Vampires of course must feed on blood. They can smell who has better blood, and Zoe said this human's blood tasted like motor oil. It's not exactly clear what makes some blood taste better, but possibly age and diet could contribute. One of the rules of the Treaty with Boyle Heights is that vampires cannot feed from the unwilling. We see vampires have buildings set up for feeding. Some humans allow vampires to feed on them because it provides a rush or euphoric feeling. They are strapped to these tables and seem to pass out for a while while the vampires feed, probably from temporary lack of blood to the brain. The tables also tilt the victim, possibly to allow blood to flow to the neck easier. To enter the second floor where the feeding happens, you must have a kind of key or token. Benny finds one on the ground and it's a red jewel surrounded with gold. And when the woman at the front desk puts it under a black light, it reveals a symbol of a crescent moon inside a bigger moon. The symbol on the jewel might represent different regions or bosses in LA, or vampires in general. It was used to enter this building to feed and to get into the party. The moon symbol is painted on the building outside after Victor kills Jay's men, and it's also seen near the beginning of the movie. These places were very prestigious, so maybe only vampires of higher status are granted these. Victor likes to break the rules, so instead of feeding on willing humans, he keeps some prisoner in these clear boxes. They are kept out in the open like a display piece, and they have tubes draining them of their blood that are hooked up to various blood spouts around the house. How does a human become a vampire in Night Teeth? Benny gets bit by Victor and is bleeding to death. So in order to save him, Blair gives him some of her vampire blood, and when he wakes up, his neck is fully healed, and he hesitantly puts his hand into the light, but is relieved when it does not burn. However, not long after, we see him staring intently at a woman's neck and he can hear her heart beating. But like I said, he wasn't burned by sunlight, so maybe you very slowly turn into a vampire and develop a weakness to sunlight. 
Or maybe he isn't a full vampire yet, and he might need to feed or something to finalize the transformation. The third option is somehow he turned into a dampier, or half vampire, but that's unlikely. So biting a human cannot turn them. A human must ingest vampire blood. It also seems like vampire blood has healing properties, but this also could have been because he's turning into a vampire. Well, that's my video on the Netflix original, Night Teeth. I honestly enjoyed watching the movie. I liked a different take on the vampire story, modern day vampires living in LA without much mention of the supernatural. I was interested right away by the history and the vampire hierarchy, as well as the Boyle Heights and the Night Legion vampire hunters. Like most vampire films, it scores low with the critics and it's a hit and miss with fans. I've heard some people say it was okay and others really enjoyed it and would watch it again. But what did you guys think? Did you guys enjoy Night Teeth? Please let me know. And if you haven't seen it and you enjoy vampire movies, I definitely recommend it. If you have any movies or TV shows you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments as that's where I get almost all my video ideas. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.